In this video, I want to show you how to use window functions to make your SQL much more powerful. And I'm going to be leaving all the queries on the description of the video so you can try this at home. So on this machine, we have a trades table, which is a live data set. Every second or so, we are reading data from Coinbase and each row represents a sell or a buy event. Uh, with cryptocurrency and we have the timestamp, the symbol, the site which can, can be sell or buy, the price and the amount. A query I can do here will be okay. I want to get the timestamp and the symbol and I want to get the price times the amount that will give me the volume of the operation. So uh, this is interesting but it's quite boring. It could be cool if I could get the running total uh, if I can add, like, you know, for each row, what has been the volume we've seen until now. And that's a window function. And we can do it like this. So we can use uh, any of the aggregate window functions we support in QuestDB. For example, in this case, I'm going to be using the sum function. And I'm going to be adding the price times the amount. But instead of doing it for a single row, I'm going to do it over a windows of rows. So here I'm going to be doing order by timestamp. Give me this volume. Uh, this will be total volume. So what I've done with this is, okay, I'm going to run this aggregation, but I'm going to be defining a window in which we are going to be aggregating. In this case, the window represents the whole table order by timestamp, which means in the first row, the total volume and the volume is exactly the same. The second row is the sum of the first and the second rows. The third row is the sum of the third three rows. So basically for each row, I'm uh, adding everything I've seen order by timestamp until this point in time. Of course, this doesn't make any sense because as I told you before, we have a symbol and the price and amount is for each symbol on a window function, I can add this. I can say partition by symbol. Now, the window definition has changed. So as you can see, the first row here, it has the, the same total volume. The second row is not adding with the first one because they have different symbols. But this one is adding the first row with uh, Ethereum and this other row. And the next one is adding, as you can see, the next one and so on. And the next one we find for Bitcoin, BTC, it should be starting from the 39. So I'm going to, okay, so here it is 39 and 5, it's 44. So yeah, as you can see, we are doing this by symbol. And I told you before, we also have the site. So right now I'm showing the site here, but I didn't change the window definition. So I'm showing the total volume per symbol, but I could do also total volume per symbol and side. Now, as you can see here, the first row is, uh, you know, it, it doesn't change. The second row is for a different symbol. This row, the third row, still doesn't change because the symbol is the same, but the side is different. And this one is adding this row for Ethereum and buy with this other row. So five and two is seven. And as you can see, this is working and this is quite cool. But actually with window functions, I can make things even more interesting. What if I don't want to get the total for the, uh, since the beginning of the table, but I want to get the total for the past 10 seconds or the past hour or the past day or the past whatever. We can play with the definition of the window to make that more interesting. Let me just reformat this a little bit. So we are going to do this here. Actually, to make this a bit easier to understand, I'm going to just filter out only one symbol, for example, ETH, USD. And I'm going to be uh, also filtering by its side. So the results will be easier to follow. And since I'm already filtering by this, I don't really need to partition. I'm going to leave it here, but I wouldn't need to partition here, but I'm going to, to leave it for the time being. So 
Something I'm going to do now, I'm going to be adding what I told you about specifying that the window shouldn't be from the beginning until this row, but should be only for the rows which are a few seconds before me. And I can do this using the range keyword. So range means I want to be ranging from, for example, uh, one second preceding and the current row, which is the default. So if I do this, you should see now, uh, actually rather than using the sum, I'm going to be using a different uh, function or I'm going to be just adding one. So this is easier to follow. So by adding one, what I'm doing here for each row, I'm telling how many rows we have within the same second. So the first row, it's only one because we don't have any rows before in these results. But after we pass one second, we are now in second 57.7. So when we are in 57.8 here already, we should have a few rows before us. So in the second before this trade, I've seen 11 results. In the second before this other trade, I see 12 results. As, if I'm, as I'm moving, you can see this number is changing. It's not ever growing as before, because right now we are only comparing with the past uh, second. For example, here, we can see the number is bigger. If I wanted to compare, not with how many seconds or hours or whatever before, I could instead use the rows. So I can say, okay, I want to compare only with the row before me. So in this case, it's always two because it's me plus the row before me, except for the first one, because there is no row before the first one. But I could do something like, okay, the 10 rows before me with the same symbol on side, I'm going to be doing this sum operation, or I could have the average price. So give me the average price for this particular value in the 10 rows before me. And that's what I wanted to show you about window functions. With window functions, you can refine the result and you can compare the current row with what happened before you, either by position using rows or by uh, time using range. And as you can imagine, this is going to be super interesting to get trends over time. You could have a moving average, for example, over the last 15 minutes and a moving average over the last one hour and then you can compare when they uh, when one is below the other so maybe that event is interesting in time or you can just take what happened in the row before you and what happened in this row and you can do a subtract and then you can have the delta between one value and the value before you so i leave it to your imagination what you can do with window functions but i can tell you this is going to take your sql to the next level See you soon.